Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how to either clone a disc or image a disc using Macro and Reflect. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so if you're having problems with your PC, then possibly it's a little bit too late already. But if you want to take a preventative measure and actually create some backups or some images of your existing Windows setup so that should things go wrong, like with Windows updates or ATI drivers or whatever it is, or Radeon drivers I suppose it is now, you can always have an image of your drive ready or a clone of your drive ready to revert back to. So today I'm going to show you how to use Macrium Reflect using the home user license to make a backup of the system or backup images of the system and for how to then restore those should things go wrong. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing you want to do is to actually get the software itself. So we'll go to uh, Macrium Reflect. So that's macrium.com. And in the software version, obviously there's loads of different versions of software. Get the one which works for you. You can have a paid version, etc. cetera, uh, but we're going to go for the free edition. Obviously, if you're using this for business, then you must use the business version. So we'll get the home one and we'll download that to our computer. Just checking to make sure I've actually got it already downloaded. So we'll save that to desktop, sorry, to our downloads, and we'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so once the download's got done, you can click on it and it's a reflect dlhf.exe. So we'll double click that. And this is the installer. So you can pretty much leave all of that as it is. Just click on download. And there's a download of about 100 megabytes for the, uh, the program itself, yeah, 101.9. So again, we'll let that carry on and download and do its thing. There is actually a tick box there. It says run installer automatically after downloading. If for some reason you don't want the installer to run straight away, you can remove that checkbox. Uh, I would say leave it on there and go through to the setup straight away. So with the installer run, just click on next and it'll go through and install the files. And now we can start setting it up. So you have to accept the terms and conditions of the agreement. And we want this to be a home license. And you don't have to uh, register the version if you don't wish to. Obviously uh, for Macrium's benefit, it's better if you do, but it's entirely up to you. Now at this point now, you can, you can choose to install the uh, VI boot or VBoot which is essentially for kind of like Hyper-V or virtualization. So you can actually, if you've got one of these images downloaded, say for instance, onto a external drive like this, such as you can then use the VI boot to actually create a virtual machine of that image. So if you want to do that, then install that also. Uh, for this particular version, we're not going to bother, but that is definitely an option. And if you want to see how that is all done and how that works, let me know in the comment section and maybe we'll do a video updating uh, with that feature. So I'll click on install and we'll go through the installation setup. And now we get the option to launch now. Let's close down some of these other windows. So this is the main interface now of the, the system. So what you need to do is choose what you want to do. Now the default is the backup, but you've also got the restore tab and also the log tab. So you can do things in there, but backup is the one we want at the moment. So if we choose, first of all, our disk, now you, ideally you want two disks for this or at least two partitions. Uh, for this particular version, I'm using the laptop's built-in drive and I'm using this separate silicon power drive to store our images or clones onto. So choose the uh, disk. So if you click on this one here, the MBR disk two, you get the options below saying clone this disk or image this disk. Uh, if we go back to the top one, which is our main Windows drive, again, you've got the option there, close, clone this disk or image this disk. So what we're gonna to choose to do is we're gonna to choose to image this disk. Now, first of all, make sure that the drive that you're actually gonna be putting the information on is formatted and is available to be used. So at the moment, our uh, secondary disk is currently FAT32. So I'm not too sure whether it will allow us to actually create the partition on there or create the image on there. So probably a good idea what we could do at the moment is go back into my computer and we'll format that drive and we'll format it in NTFS just to make sure that everything's gonna be okay. And we'll do a quick format on it. There are some file size limitations to FAT32, so sometimes you're better off with NTFS. 
So close that down. And now what we can do is we can actually refresh the images here. So we'll refresh that. And now I've got MBR disk two, which is now uh, NTFS, so that's great. So if we choose the first disk and we'll choose image this disk, first of all. So there is our source, which is the top one. Now you don't have to do all the uh, partitions if you don't want to. I choose to just because it's easier to uh, restore the entire disk. If you want to, you can just do the NTFS primary partition. Again, entirely up to you. So it's actually the destination. So our destination, we'll click on the three dots on the end and we'll stick it on our Silicon Power B75 Pro. Click OK. And image name, you can choose an image name if you want to. I'm just going to leave it as it is. And we'll click on Next. So now you can set up templates or schedules. So there's various ways you can do it. There's default ones built in. So you've got a grandfather, father, son setup. So you've got your daily incremental, which is your son, your weekly differential backup, which is your father, and the monthly full, which is your grandfather. Uh, that generally works for most people. So I'm going to choose that one. And at this point, you can edit a schedule when it does it. So at the moment, it's doing it at nine o'clock on the first Monday of every month. Uh, that one's doing it every Monday, every week. And that one's doing it every day, starting at nine o'clock again. The incremental one, because it's a daily, you might want to set that to a different schedule. You don't have to have a schedule for the ones. You can run this manually from a XML file. But generally, if you just leave it set up, it's easier to do. You've also got data retention rules as well. So you can keep full backups for a certain amount of weeks and differential backups for a couple of weeks. And again, incremental you can do, but that is a uh, enhanced version of this software, so we'll ignore that for now. So easy way to do it, straightforward, is just click on Next. Again, you can configure all those settings however you want to. I click on Finish, and you can save the backup if you want to. So enter a name for the backup, and if you want to stick it on the desktop, just so you can have a reminder of it. And we'll click on OK. So that's going to run the backup now. There's also going to be a shortcut on the desktop. So if for some reason you kind of think, oh, I haven't done a backup or I need to do a quick backup, maybe you're about to change some hardware or install some software, which you're a little bit dubious of, click on the button, run a quick backup, and then you've got your image ready for you on your external drive or on a partition on your drive elsewhere if you wanted to. Because of the way it works, it uses shadow volume copy, which is part of Windows. So you don't want to have the folder actually within your main Windows operating system. It does need to be somewhere separate because obviously then you're trying to make a copy of a copy which is already in use, which uh, doesn't work particularly well. But if you do it this way, set it to a separate drive, at least that way you've, you've got disaster recovery. So say for instance with the laptop, if the laptop got stolen or something, and I've still got my USB uh, drive, I can plug this into another laptop somewhere, run VI boot, and I can get into my system and use it as I would. Alternatively, if I've got a different machine, uh, a new model, say for instance, again, through insurance or something like that, if it got stolen, I could use this and then just restore straight back to the laptop to have it how it was on the day I did the backup, which is really good. And all of this is completely free if you're a home user. So it's pretty sweet. So this uh, backup is going to take a little while to go through, but this is a, a nice, easy way of creating an image. The cloning process is pretty much the same. So you have a source drive and a destination drive. Ideally, you want your destination drive to be larger than your source. Uh, otherwise, it can get very messy because you have to start resizing partitions. Again, if that's something you may be interested in, let me know, and I'll do a video on that also. Um, essentially, it will be a one-for-one -one copy, so it will overwrite any existing data, and you can't use the drive for anything else. So say, for instance, in a case like this with the silicon power drive or an external USB drive, if you've already got folders and files on there, then a clone backup is probably not the way to go because it will erase whatever's on there. Whereas if you use the image backup, then that will just put an image file on the drive along with all your other data. So there you go. There is how to use Macrium Reflect to create an image file of your Windows-based computer. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.